in this lecture we will study the mechanism of the fatigue failure we will see that how fatigue failure occurs and what is the mechanism behind it so firstly uh, we will see that what are different types of fatigue so first one is the mechanical fatigue so in this type of fatigue fluctuations in externally applied stresses or strains is there means the fluctuations in mechanical force is there which produces stresses and strains so that is known as mechanical fatigue then the second one is the creep fatigue so if you apply cyclic loads at high temperature then that leads to the failure and that type of failure is known as the creep fatigue another one is thermomechanical fatigue so in this type of fatigue the fluctuations in temperature as well as the mechanical loads which produces stresses and strain is there so combination of thermal load as well as mechanical loads which are cyclic in nature produces the thermomechanical fatigue then in corrosion fatigue when cyclic loads are applied in a chemical aggressive environment or embrittling environment means that can produce the brittleness in the component or the material so that is known as the corrosion fatigue in phreatic fatigue the cyclic loads when the loads are combined with the frictional sliding then that is known as the fretting fatigue so there is another term static fatigue which is seldom discussed so let us recall the usual definitions of the fatigue so the usual definition says that the degradation of degradation of the mechanical properties which leads to the failure of a material or component when subjected to cyclic loading is fatigue so means the catch here is the cyclic loading means fatigue generally we define when the loading is cyclic in nature but this definition excludes the phenomenon of static fatigue means the loading here is is static but still it is producing the phenomenon of fatigue so this type of phenomena occurs or is used to define the stress corrosion cracking in glasses and in ceramics when they are um, subjected to moisture so brittle solids which can be glasses or some crystalline ceramics also are brittle in nature so they undergo subcritical crack crack growth means the crack size increases up to a point beyond which it can grow at a much faster rate and which can lead to the failure so when they are subjected to um, they are placed in aggressive environment which can lead to the starting of the corrosion but the load at those under those aggressive environments is static uh, in nature but still the, the those brittle materials fail in a way which resembles with the failure of the fatigue loading so silica based glasses are susceptible to this kind of crack growth when they are placed in the presence of moisture or in other uh, case if glassy phase exists at the grain boundaries and interface means if you have a material and at the grain boundaries some glassy phase is there then it is also susceptible to such type of an attack so if we have to um, understand this static fatigue then it is more appropriately we can define it as a stress corrosion phenomena rather than a cyclic stress related phenomena means when the environment is aggressive in nature which can produce the corrosion but your component is subjected to static loading only still that corrosion leads to the formation of stresses over the period of time which changes in which generally increases in magnitude and lead to the failure so such type of uh, failure are known as the static fatigue so mechanism of fatigue so initial cause of this fatigue is the cracks and other surface defects which are present in this specimen so what are these uh, surface defect so microscopically if you will see the material then no material is perfectly smooth and flat but it has roughness and finest cracks and other inclusions which may be impurities so such roughnesses discontinuities 
and those impurities acts like a small notches which increase the stresses and the stress increased in a way such that the triaxial stress state arises means triaxial stress state means that stresses in in the x y and z direction generates so that is known as the stage one means crack initiation so that crack is initiated due to the roughness discontinuities or some finest cracks which are already present or due to the impurities then the stresses at these um, these points or these discontinuities are very much higher than the uniaxial norm, nominal stress value and these stresses leads to the microplastic deformations means the deformation is the magnitude of the deformation is very small and during that deformation sometimes the hardening effect occurs means the as if, if you have to perf, uh, do the plastic deformation then plastic deformation occurs due to the dislocation movement but sometimes dislocation collect over uh, pile up over one over the another which leads to the hardening effect and in the second stage or oh, the crack growth occurs and crack growth occurs on the planes of high tensile stresses during crack growth plastic deformation is occurring and plastic deformation occurring occurs due to the movement of these atoms over these some uh, slip planes and those slip planes have high tensile stress value so the crack propagation actually leads to the plastic deformation which in turn reduces the cross sectional area which is there for sustaining the load so the decreasing cross sectional area will no, no longer will be able to withstand the stress and it leads to the ultimate ductile failure over a long period of time so firstly cracks and roughnesses are there which crack roughness and discontinuities are there which start the crack nu uh, nucleations or crack uh, initiation and after that the crack will grow and after the crack growth plastic deformation mic microplastic deformation turns into the macroplastic deformation and which leads to the failure of the component if we have to see the fracture surface in the under the microscope then we can see these lines so these um, arcs you can see over the surface so this is the schematic diagram of a Comp of a component which has been failed due to uh, during the fatigue loading so this point marks the initiation crack initiation so during the cyclic process of the uh, cyclic progress of the crack fatigue striations occurs so striations are the uh, lines which which generates over the surface of the material so here uh, you can see this diagram so this is a, a picture of a rock where you can see these lines so these lines are actually known as striations so these lines appear on the surface of the component during the stage 2 at at which the crack propagation occurs but the, these striations can only be visible when you see the uh, the component under the microscope but when a strong change in the crack propagation occurs or when the stress intensity is higher then the crack propagation occurs at a higher stress higher rate and which leads to the visible striations which are known as the beach marks so here these arcs which you can see these are the beach marks which are easily visible uh, with the naked eyes also so beach mark occurs due to the change in the stress intensity and the change in the stress intensity is also associated with the velocity of the crack propagation means crack is propagating at a faster rate and beach marks are also always perpendicular to the direction of propagation so here the direction of propagation is of crack is this way and you can see the beach marks are along this direction so the crack is always perpendicular to these beach marks and this reason which uh, you can see as a uh, rugged surface so this this signifies the fracture of the component so this rugged surface actually um, 
This arises because after the certain crack growth, the material fails suddenly and that sudden failure leads to the this rough surface which is produced. So this is the actual diagram of a component which has been failed during the fatigue loading. So here from here crack has originated and these small arcs you can see these are the beach marks and this signifies the fatigue zone. And here you can see in this region you do not have any beach marks so which signifies the final fracture and this final fracture actually uh, occurs after the after the crack has propagated to a uh, to a value which leads to the sudden failure so the beach marks can be also be used to determine the time at which the crack starts to spread so this analogy you can um, uh, understand with the help of the annual rings of tree so these rings of the tree actually with these rings of the tree you can uh, guess the life of the this tree in the similar ways the number of beach marks you can calculate and you can uh, calculate the time period which has occurred or which has um, which was there in order for the fatigue failure of the component then striation surface is usually relatively smooth due to the permanent microscopic friction of the two surfaces because when the fatigue failure occurs the component uh, breaks down into two parts so two uh, between those two parts the friction is there and due to which the striation surface is smooth but if there is a forced fracture surface if we have to see then that is the ragged uh, st uh, surface structure so this point is the surface of this mm, this point actually is the uh, rugged surface or you can say this is the rough surface which marks the failure of the component and this appears because the crack growth um, has occurred up to an appreciable um, limit such that the uh, material can now fail in a ductile manner so these diagrams actually shows the shows the um, fracture surface under low load and high load so when the load is higher then the this forced fracture surface is higher because the load is sufficient for producing the fracture but in low load the crack propagates slowly but in case of higher load the crack propagation occurs up to a smaller extent and after that the component breaks into two parts forced fracture surface uh, can also be used to determine the level of dynamic load likewise here this forced fracture surface or this ragged surface is larger it means that the load which has been applied were larger in magnitude so this was all about the fatigue failure mechanism. Thank you.